Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses that need to be highlighted. And while you're here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share us with your network. Caregivers, we've all known them, and if we live long enough, we're all going to be one. What is it about caregiving, though, that is so difficult, but somehow so rewarding? How do caregivers get through some of the hardest times in their life and still be okay? And what is it about caregiving that makes us think we can't talk about some things? Today, I want to introduce you to a friend of mine who has written an inspiring book. The book is called Welcome to Caregiving, The Things Caregivers Never Talk About, and it's really good. Y'all say hello to my friend, Aaron Copeland. That's Aaron with an E, Copeland with no D. Hi, Aaron. How are you? I'm excellent. How are you today, Ricky? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for joining me today because this topic is really important. I want to ask you first off, just in general, what is it about caregiving that made you want to need to write this kind of a book? Really, when I was in the middle of my caregiving for my husband, which spanned over a decade and in multiple states with multiple medical centers, so I got to deal with some different personalities. <laughs> And I found there really wasn't anything out there that spoke to the kind of caregiver I was. There's a lot out there that says you're amazing. You're an angel sent from heaven to take care of people, mm -hmm. which I'm not, I'm not going to deny that. There you go. That's right. <laughs> but I also had feelings that made me feel not like an angel. Mm -hmm. I had those bad feelings like frustration, yeah. anger, fear, uh, some resentment. And nobody was talking about those things. No one was talking about how to get through those challenges and that guilt. Yeah. And, and that's so important because you do hear, you know, oh, you're a caregiver. You are obviously anointed of God, sent from heaven to be, you know, and here's your halo where you, like you said, everyone, which can get, which can get heavy. Yeah. Because now you, there's this expectation of you to literally walk on water and instead of walking, just saunter or float, if you will. But what do you do with those bad feelings? And, and I really love that. So let's talk a little bit about your caregiving journey. Who were you caring for and how did that get started? I was caring for my husband, Jerry. He was diagnosed with liver cancer in 2009. Mm. And he went through a series of treatments, major surgeries. He had a successful liver transplant. He's doing fantastic today, which I always forget to tell people. It's amazing. Awesome. We're celebrating his, ooh, I think this summer will be his seven year transplant anniversary. Wow. That's and awesome. Every year we celebrate his liver. We named her Regina. So we celebrate okay. Regina and we give thanks to the donor family. So we do a little celebration every year on That's awesome. his transplant anniversary. Yeah. Uh, after the transplant, he did have major complications and I did almost lose him, which is terrifying when you don't understand what's happening. Yeah. And like I said, he's, and then there's, you know, all of the recovery. Yeah. <laughs> and and after people don't realize, those things. yeah, recovery in and of itself is a whole ordeal. Now yeah. you started your, your journey in 2009. You said it was almost a decade that you were a caregiver. It was. For Fortunately, Jerry was never, you know, some people get so sick when they're waiting for a living that they're in the ICU wa mm -hmm. waiting for an organ. Fortunately, Jerry never got that sick, mm -hmm. but it was awesome. all of the treatments, all of the testing surgeries in between to keep him going. Mm -hmm. And so he was on the transplant list, I believe, for eight years. Wow. Mm -hmm. So it was a long time. Yeah. Long time. So as a caregiver, I, you know, I, I hate to ask the question, but it's a real thing. What is it when you were doing, you know, in the middle, in the midst, if you will, of your caregiving journey, what kind of things did you miss concerning about yourself? <sighs> Ooh. 
it, I mean, and again, and this is why nobody talks about it because it feels un really uncomfortable to say it, but nothing was about me anymore. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Every, everybody asked about the patient, which I appreciated, sure. but people a lot of times didn't remember or think to say, and are you okay? How are you? Oh, How are man. you feeling? Mm -hmm. And I had my own business. And so keeping that afloat, like everything was just kind of holding it together at the bare minimum, like by the strength, yeah. just making sure I could keep things going without everything collapsing. So I, in addition to keeping my own things going, I did take on other duties as a sign, including <laughs> things like helping keep my husband's business afloat because he also had his own business. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a lot that right. all of a sudden you lose when you right. become a caregiver. Oh my gosh. It, you know, looking back, cause this is where you have the most clarity, right? They say hindsight is 20, yeah. 20. Absolutely. I even <laughs> have hindsight about my hindsight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bet because when you wrote the book, you know, you have some of the funniest chapters in here, you know, uh, welcome to the sunshine state. I think there was something in there about Regina, which had me cracking up. You know, it's so your, your book is really good, but it's so funny. You, you don't you. think of a, a caregiver having, not that caregivers don't have a sense of humor, but to write it in the way that you did, it made it really unassuming and less what would be the proper word, less scary to talk about some of the really hard things. Looking Thank back you. right now, what's one of the funniest things in a serious moment that you can remember? Some of the funniest things it really is, it is looking back on them because in the moment it was not funny, <laughs> but I lost my mind. I straight up lost my mind. And so one of the little in hindsight sections I have is when people talk about being kind to others because you don't know what they're going through. Mm -hmm. I was mean to people. I was really, I was mean to people and I would yeah. yell at people and I would cut people off on the freeway because I was, you know, it was like five o'clock in the morning, I'm trying to get the hospital to do, you know, to be there for doctor's rounds. And be like, oh my gosh, there's an exit. I almost missed it. So I wasn't trying to be rude. I didn't think I was more important. I just didn't know if my husband was dying. Yeah. So oh, wow. silly things like that and goofy things. I went to the bank to make a deposit and they're like, you can't make a deposit here. I'm just like, why? They're like, <laughs> because this is chasing your deposits for bank of America. <laughs> like ordering a Big Mac at Burger King. What do you mean yes. you don't have that? What are here? you doing? What are you doing? And so looking back, I can, yeah. I can see and I can understand, but yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. I, you said, I, I literally lost my mind. How many <laughs> caregivers since then have you talked to, have you spoken to? And they pretty much tell you the same thing. You know, I, I'm losing my mind. I'm, I'm going to go with every single one. I don't right. think I've ever met one that's like, I got this. Can't wait for the next one. Let's do it again. It's not. Yeah. No, it doesn't happen that way. I mean, most, uh, many are overwhelmed. And the ones who do have a groove. Mm -hmm. I feel like sometimes there's just a sadness. And I mm -hmm. feel like it's that place of not being able to fully express yourself and fully share what's happening because right. you aren't the sick one and mm -hmm. you're fine and you're okay. And you're helping to take care of somebody else. And it just, it's uncomfortable. Yeah, It's uncomfortable. I, I love the air quotes because you literally, you're fine, but are you really? No, I'm not fine. I'm losing my mind. I haven't showered in four days and I think I should eat at some point this week. You know, yeah. you're not fine. But, and, and one of, one of my favorite funny stories is I was seeing a therapist. I always had some kind of mental health support that way. And I decided that since exercise is a natural way to combat burnout and depression and anxiety, I was going to start going to Orange Theory, well, which yeah. if people yeah. don't know, that's like high interval training. Like you're running on the treadmill, you're doing rowing machines, you're doing burpees and weights. It's 
Whew. And I really <laughs> kind of believed that I could sweat the depression out of me. Mm. <laughs> How did that, that go, I, Aaron? That Just I curious. Would outsmarted it. How it went it was my therapist said, so Aaron, had you been going to Orange Theory? And I was like, no, no. I'm like, I'm a genius. And she's like, yeah, I <laughs> you think it may have been a little much. And I was like, oh, <laughs> okay, okay. You, you caught me. I really thought she was going to be like, you figured it all out. You don't right. even have to come to therapy anymore. You are <laughs> you're a rock star. No, it didn't work that way. <laughs> That's so funny. You know, I, I'm thinking of the people in my life that are caregivers right now. And we we talk and I do ask because I'm very conscious of it. You know, how are you doing? When you ask somebody who is a caregiver in the middle of that journey, how are you doing? Aaron, what are they really telling you when they say, I'm okay? Whew. I suppose that they're not. Mm. they're not okay and one way one single word kind of shifted it for me when people would phrase it this way instead of how are you adding the word feeling how are mm. you feeling because they're not okay they're not well it's not amazing they're not excited happy loving life it it's not like that for them mm. but asking someone how they're feeling gives them that window. Number one, they feel seen. And number two, it gives them that window to say, maybe I'm okay, but I'm a little tired. Mm. Or I actually slept okay last night. I just need to get my meals in order. Mm -hmm. It gives them that little bit of opening because just how are you? Nobody wants to say I'm bad. Have you ever met anyone that's yeah. really said, I'm pretty shitty today. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Thanks for asking. And so I found that adding that one word, how are you feeling? Yeah. Mm. Is kind of a portal into the soul. That is so good. Because a lot of times, if you're not in that caregiving journey, you don't know what to say. You don't know how you should act. You know, should you no, ask about the patient? Should you ask yeah, it's about you? It's very tricky because people don't, they want to acknowledge, but they don't want to overstep it. You don't, I mean, nobody forgets what's happening in their lives, mm -hmm. but when you're outside of it, you don't want to remind people of yeah. the ickiness in their life. And I actually created, and it's on my website, 10 ways to support a caregiver. Uh, and it's exactly that. It's a free PDF download of just little ideas and little things you can do to support a caregiver in your life to help them feel seen. I, I love that. What Can you give us two or three of the things that are on that list? Sending them maybe a little playlist oh. of uplifting songs. That's just fun. One of the tips I give to caregivers is in taking the pause, like enjoying your music, taking those minutes in the car in the grocery store parking lot to like rock out to that favorite song. Yeah. Sometimes that's all we have is a couple of minutes is the pause. Mm. So music is nice. Even just a text that says, Hey, I'm thinking of you today. Yeah. Wow. Uh, fun, uh, some fun things to do. I, I love coloring as oh. an active, as an active meditation. Mm -hmm. So maybe send them a little coloring book and some markers. They can bring it with them to the hospital. They can be at yeah. home with it. It's just something that kind of takes your mind somewhere fun to yeah. a place of, of childhood and frivolity. Yeah. And color, I mean, coloring's fun. I love coloring's color. fun. I tr it's true. I color. I do. Yeah. I, I really like big coloring books. And, and those are great ideas because like I said, outside of it, we don't know what to do and we want to do something. So now that you have written this amazing book, and again, you all, the book is called Welcome to Caregiving, The Things Caregivers Never Talk About. Now that you've written this book, how many caregivers have come your way to say, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You said oh, everything God. that I wanted to say. A lot. A lot have come to me and a lot who have already been on the journey and they're just like, you nailed it. This was it. I wish I had this. Mm -hmm. when I was in the depths of my caregiving journey, yeah. like, thank you. So it's also served as a point of validation for a lot of people. So it's, it's a companion. If you're in it right now, it's the source of validation. If you haven't, if you've already gone through it, 
Mm -hmm. And, um, and if, and it gives a little glimpse of an insight, if you have Mm -hmm. a family member that's going through it as well. So, you know, while you were talking, it made me think of, um, I don't know, do you all have children as well? Jerry does. I have a stepson. Okay. So I'm thinking of the, the families who are in the caregiving journey that have little kids and that person, whomever, because caregiving does not care whether you are male or female, black or white, big or tall, doesn't care, rich or poor. It it will, it can hit everyone. So I'm I'm thinking of the person that is caregiving right now watching this, that has little kids that still has to do dinner, go to soccer, get them to think, Aaron, what is one thing that you would tell that individual in the caregiving journey? Oh, I mean, you got this. You just, you do. We have, we have the strength. We can get through it and you got, you got to do you. You have Mm -hmm. to do what works for you. And that's why my book, it's not a how-to guide. It is not how to be a caregiver guide because Mm -hmm. even for me in different situations, I responded differently. So it's the companion. It's a way to soften the journey. And the deepest message in it is there is no wrong way. There is no right way. It's just all about love. Yeah. Oh, it is all about love. And I think that it's so important. There's no right way and there's no wrong way. It's like parenting. You know, that's one thing I I hate when people try to parent bash people. Look, y'all, there's no right or wrong way to be somebody's loving caring parent and and like you said do you if they make it if you if they get out of the house alive you take the win and in your case as a caregiver if you make it out of the hospital yourself and your person gets to come home and get well take the win take the win did it just and in that in that self-care mode just like that orange theory story i just told i have a caregiver friend who did orange theory she loved it it was amazing for her it was exactly what she needed it wasn't it wasn't my way i was trying to do something else so i had to find my way yeah Yeah. just real quickly before we move on erin at what point or how many points in your caregiving journey did you just stop and literally fall into a puddle of the name it i can't i can't count the waves i can't count the number of times Mm -hmm. i can't count the number of times and it was one of the reasons so for me and the kind of caregiver i was i did like to be alone because i liked Mm -hmm. to have those moments privately by myself i didn't want a bunch of people around me some people need that and they thrive Mm -hmm. with that and Mm -hmm. that community is really what gets them through right i was a little different that way Mm -hmm. and you just needed and, to be and alone. That's why this book needed to be out there too, because I know there's people that are a little more isolated for lack of a better word. Mm-hmm. And this is something that they can have in their space and know that they're not alone. Yeah. And you all, if you're watching this and you are a caregiver yourself, I promise you get this book. It is a help. I'm not a caregiver, but that doesn't mean I won't be, but it is so, first of all, it is so real, so raw, and it's absolutely hilarious. There are places that you will tear up and then there are places that you are just going to LOL, literally laugh out loud. So Erin, I appreciate the book. It's awesome. So Erin, if somebody wanted to reach out to you to learn more about you and your book, where can they find you? Best way is through my website at erincopeland.com. Erin with an E, Copeland, no D. I like that so much. And don't worry, if you didn't get that, it will be in the description below. And don't forget, while you're here, make sure that you share us with your network. And if you or someone you know has an inspiring story, a topic we absolutely have to talk about, or a small business that needs to be highlighted, go over to our website at faithonfriday.com and send us an email. Aaron, my friend, before I let you go, yes, got to play a game. Oh, I love games. So this game is called This or That. I'm going to give you the choice of two things and you, off the top of your head, just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play? I'm sorry. Let's do this. Plants 
or flowers? Flowers. Hotel or tent? Oh, hotel. Mm, right? Ugh. <laughs> Water park or amusement park? <sighs> amusement park. Mm. I like my roller coasters. I do like my roller Yeah. Coasters. See, I have problems swimming in other people's juice. That's just me. Okay. <laughs> There's, that. There's that. Practical joker or I don't play like that? <sighs> you know, I'm pleased that April Fool's Day came and went and I didn't play any jokes and none were played on me. So I'm going to go with. No. Okay. I hear you. Candlelight or moonlight? Moonlight. Mm. Planner or make it up as I go? <sighs> I'd like to make it up a little more as I go, but I'm a planner. Not a bad thing. Go all day or I need a nap. Uh, uh, oh, nap. <laughs> <laughs> I am with you, girl. I love a nap. When you're chatting with friends, is it pecan or pecan? Pecan. Okay. Yeah. When you first meet somebody, what do you notice? Their eyes or their smile? Smile. Okay. And are you a words of affirmation person or an acts of service kind of girl? It's very, very close. It used to be a solid words of affirmation, mm -hmm. but now it's a little more acts of service. I think the, that caregiver in me. Yeah, probably. I <laughs> learned to like to receive that back. It's the receiving. Okay. I like my acts of service. Not a bad thing. And finally, what would you tell your 13 year old self right now? you got this you got this you don't need to be afraid you've got it mm, i love it aaron thank you so much for joining me i appreciate your time it's so it's my pleasure i love being here today <laughs> all right everybody that's it for this time but don't worry we'll be back with more faith on friday presents